Hello, welcome to this episode of Talking About Rock, sponsored by School of Rock, North Buffalo. We're there making musicians every day. Here we bring you rock interviews from veteran and upcoming artists. On this episode, returning to the show, the high-energy rock band Grosh. From Buffalo, New York, they continue to wow audiences and fans. The band features Grace Logan on guitar, who in 2023 was voted Buffalo's best blues guitarist by Buffalo Nightlife. She has also traveled as a guitar tech for folk legend Joan Baez. On drums, Joss English, who is renowned for his high-energy, hard-hitting playing, as well as his versatility. Josh has shared the stage with many national acts, including Larkin Poe, Gary Newman, Colorado, and the Goo Goo Dolls. With Megan Brown on vocals, she is an acclaimed vocalist who leaves audiences with no doubt that she was born to perform. Her career accomplishments range from winning the Northeast region of National Hard Rock Competition in 2014, to gracing the covers of local music magazines and newspapers while touring across the country. Also opening for greats like Weezer, Brand New, Sheila Devine, Theory of a Dead Man, Dennis DeYoung, Tea Party, and Ron Hawkins. Also, Dylan Hunt on bass with his tasteful licks and charismatic stage presence, having made him the go-to bass player for musicians and recording studios in Western New York and beyond. He has toured with many original artists, including Derek St. Holmes, guitarist for Ted Nugent and St. Paradise, and former X Factor contestant, Caitlin Koch. They're here to chat with us about recording their upcoming album. Next up, Grosh on Talking About Rock. Okay, we now have Grace, Megan, Josh, and Dylan from Grosh joining us. Hello, everyone. How's it going? What's up? Hey. Hey, great to see you guys again. You just got back from recording your new album. So how long were you guys at Sonic Ranch? Like 10 days, I think, right? 10 yeah. Days. Yeah. yeah. So that was pretty quick, actually, right? You weren't there that long. Yeah. Well, I it... We looked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, you know, we got there and it felt like after a few days, like we were just in our own kind of little world, like summer camp or something. And then uh, getting back home, it was like, oh my gosh, like that happened, you know, we were right. just 10 days in Texas doing nothing but making music. So, right, yeah, it did. It just felt like this little period of time that was just like its own little bubble. It was awesome. Yeah. Did you guys kind of have a, it planned out? You had some demos planned out before you went out, what you wanted to accomplish? I mean, you must have. I mean, that's pretty quick. Yeah, we, we rolled in there with 16 songs, I think. Nice. 16 demos. Um, and we had to pare that down because we're going to be doing vinyl. So, you know, you can only fit so much on a vinyl. So we came back with 10 songs in 10 days. Right. And you guys worked with uh, Tim LaFerre? LaFave. LaFave. Thank you for correcting me. I wasn't sure on yeah. that. So how did you guys meet up with him? Um, Grace, yeah. you want to tell us? Sure. <laughs> so I'm going to try to make this simple. Let's see. Okay. It's cool. <laughs> it's a cool story, though. So um, we are friends with um, Nick, the owner of Osteria downtown in Buffalo. And he is very close with the Tedeschi Trucks Band. And so he had us play a private party for the Tedeschi Trucks Band, which was awesome for me, especially at like Derek Trucks is my favorite guitar player ever. And so I got to play for him. You know, it was pretty surreal. Um, and his their drummer, uh, Falcon, Tyler, um, asked if he could do he, he could produce our record, our next record. And so we were going back and forth with him for about a year, um, sending him songs and mm -hmm. up with dates and stuff. But Tedeschi Trucks is just like constantly touring. Mm -hmm. 
So we couldn't really come up with a time that worked for everybody. Um, so he ended up hooking us up with Tim. Um, and so that's how that whole connection happened. And Tim, it, it was really awesome working with him. So yeah. we're really glad that it worked out. So. So, so it all worked out in your favor, even though you had to kind of juggle it around a little bit and figure yeah. it out. But it sounds like you you were you guys were prepared. And were you all recording together in one room or did you have separate booths or how did, uh, how did that go? So basically we did like the kind of live bedrock and so the room we recorded in the studio mm-hmm. it's called big blue um so just for a little context the place we recorded is on a pecan farm it's enormous <laughs> there's like seven recording studios and we recorded on uh big blue so you're in the room <laughs> in the room yeah it's funny i don't know um <laughs> <laughs> big blue and there's little red over them in the corner yeah. and... but um so yeah the drums the guitar the bass we recorded the bedrock um in the giant room and then we just did like overdubs and stuff like that after so kind of like half and half you know half live half yeah the main parts yeah, yeah all the live yeah, main parts, parts are yeah live. The the big blue room that we're talking about. Maybe we'll send you a picture. Maybe you can like put it up in your thing or whatever. But yeah, I, I have a couple photos I'm gonna show oh, folks, okay. but I don't think I don't know if I have the room. Yeah, send me that so I can I can show folks that when we're talking about it. Yeah. Huge. It's huge. You you could park like a couple private jets in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's a beautiful big room. Yeah. Big so was, was there any <laughs> any changes they made like to get different sounds or different feels sometimes when you're in the studio if you you know if you have a really good producer he can kind of give you some ideas of some changes to make you know how you want to set things up or all right i know some studios if they have their if you're playing against like a certain surface like a certain wood or a certain you know deflectors for the drums did, did you guys go through any of that yeah i mean Josh had two different drum sets in two different rooms mm-hmm. that he would switch between. Um, I sang on three different mics, depending on the song, or sometimes in both at the same time. Um, lots of different amps playing around with. Just Yeah, lots of playing around with different sounds, different instruments, different mics. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. So what's what songs are you guys most excited about off the new album? Can you give us some, can you give us a little 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 sneak peek? I don't know if we can have have anybody Dylan or somebody say tell us maybe a little sneak peek. You gotta say something. I don't know if I have like a favorite one yet. Not well, yet. you got you gotta have something that's fun to play. I'm sure there's one or two yeah, that are real fun to play. Right? Ball talk is super fun, mm. and the tones are really cool on it. Yeah. So I think yeah. right now that's probably my one. It's like a big like stompy kind of almost audio slave rock song it's pretty nice cool. yeah very very cool and I'm, I'm sure they fed you there and it was and it was looks like it was amazing some of the pictures that grace sent me looked very cool it looks like you guys are just having a good time basically and i saw some of the reels you guys created messing around a little bit <laughs> yeah the food was great like all of our meals were cooked for us which was amazing because you know it's oh. just another thing that they do to make sure that you don't have to stress about anything other than your music is your dinner is ready when you're ready to eat. And it's all wonderful home cooked meals, a lot of authentic Mexican food, you know, that that down south that close to the border. So it's delicious and very convenient. So, so how would you guys say that's compared to other places you've recorded at? Has it been that that cohesive and that simple where you were just focused on doing that? No. <laughs> oh, Short answer, no. <laughs> it helps too that we were away from home. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh, so we were, you know, we were there and everything we needed was on. We never left the ranch. Um, right. We never had to, you know, and that's that in itself is pretty special. You know, if we were home, we'd have to go home, you know, and right. go back and forth to the studio. So to be just dialed in the whole time. Yeah. Um, and to be able for them to have the space for us to be able to do that is pretty special. So okay. when you're when you guys were out on the ranch, who, who how else did you meet? I'm sure there are other bands there, you know, recording their material and stuff. Who, who else did you have a chance to hang out with or chat with? Um, a lot of people. There was a guy named JD Nash. He brought his band, uh, I believe, from New Mexico, from Albuquerque, Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, yeah, they were cool. They were kind of like more just, just, just uh, 
not rootsy. That's that's the wrong term for it. But um, he was super mm-hmm. cool, and and we kept running into each other for lunch and, and dinner and stuff. And yeah, definitely a cool band, cool guy. Um, JD Nash from Albuquerque. Yeah. Nice. Very very cool. So, what can you tell us? Like, what was like your typical day like? What was what was your schedule like? Did you have a certain amount of time that you know you're working on stuff, or that you know you're off? Did you have like a day off in there at all, or was just how how did that work out for everyone? We worked. It was it was. I mean, we. I would just get up in the morning, walk to breakfast, grab people breakfast burritos, and then just. <laughs> Right to work. He was ready. He was ready to go after his burrito. Yeah. Oh no! <laughs> First day. So we came in. This is a good story. So is it it's great. It all looks the same. Is it? We got um to the studio at night, and it was like pitch black. Right. Right. And you're out in the wilderness, so it's definitely, it's like pitch black. Literally in the desert. So we land and, you know, we're trying to like keep track of where we're driving around this giant pecan farm. And we wake up the morning after and Dylan and I are like, yeah, we, we've got to figure it out. We can figure it out. Figure it out. We're gonna, we know where to go to breakfast. Where, right. where you go to eat is about a mile away from where we actually stayed and slept and recorded. Oh, so it's not that, not like you could walk like to the farmhouse or whatever off oh, in the we distance. Got, well, we walked there. <laughs> we got, we <laughs> got <walk>. lost. But <laughs> it turned out that we walked directly by the place we were supposed to go and we had to have like grace drop a ping <laughs> yeah. house. so this pecan farm so huge. it's like over three thousand acres so yeah. it's real easy to get lost oh yeah yeah All, it's exactly the same. so josh is no longer in charge of directions no <laughs> wait a minute it was not just i was there i was there oh. Oh, don't you, they both share that. Share that. Okay. The important thing to note here is that once we found the guys and we're like, okay, we're gonna find the house where the food is. Right. The way that we made sure that we were going the right way is like the the roads are dirt. It's all dirt roads. Right. Sure. And I was wearing sneakers the night before that have like a very specific footprint. <laughs> So I was like, oh my God, there's my footprints from last night because I was the only one that walked from like where we got dropped off to the studio. Right. Followed my f- footprints. Literally retracing our steps. <laughs> <laughs> that was good though. That was perfect. That worked out well. So yeah. good thing she was there for you guys. You, you yeah. would have went hungry that day. You can solve murders now. <laughs> <laughs> very, very cool. It looked like construction. <laughs> Oh, yeah. so so with this with this new project you guys got going on here, this new recording, did did you try to push yourself or or go into, out of your comfort zone and explore different different things to do? I know you guys definitely have a unique style and sound. I I hope you kept that incorporated, but you know, for always for the next project, always people are exploring and doing something different. Is there a little something different in some of this here that we can expect? Yeah. Yeah. Um. There's. I mean, I don't want to take over. Well, I mean, I think we all we tried a lot of different things. I don't think we deviated away from like what we sound like too much. There are a couple songs that kind of called for a different. Uh, like there's a song that I'm thinking of in particular. Um, that's kind of more of an indie vibe. So that's when we put him on like a different drum kit, you know, a real dead kind of sound. So we definitely tried to make it so that, you know, the songs were treated how they should be. But right. You played to the song more or less. Yeah. yeah. It still sounds like Grosh, you know, definitely very much. Yeah, and some of the guitar tones are a little bit different than what you would normally use. Some of the bass tones are very different than what I would generally yeah. use. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Could you guys usually have like a bluesy rock type of, zeppelin-y type of sound a little bit you know i would when when i first saw you guys perform i was pretty blown away when you guys are yeah. opening for mr speed i'm like where where is this band ben holy holy crap that's you know? definitely all still there for sure but yeah. like i can't really stress this enough tim is a genius and there was like like for things i'd never done before there was one song um which is like this big anthemic song where it's like we got to get like group vocals and we're all going to stand around a mic and do some ooze and i've literally never sang on a record before until now like right. it's like a 
limited capacity. I played a piano part on one, <laughs> you know, just like little <laughs> things like that. And I don't really think any of us would have come up with that stuff ourselves, no. but Tim just had these ideas and he would push them and it started turning into a joke. Cause like every time Tim would have an idea, we've been playing <laughs> these songs for years. Tim right. and I, I would always go, what? I don't know. <laughs> but like that, it always ended up being really cool after it came together. So, you know, we still, Tim did a really good job, especially now that I've had time to like listen back to everything. Right. You just were so used to hearing it in a certain way and playing in a certain style. We still still sound like ourselves, but like blown up, if that makes any sense. Oh, for sure. For sure. That's definitely a mark of a good producer, right? He has ideas, some stuff for you to try. It might be a little bit out of your comfort zone, but like you said, it's, it's going to blow up that song a little bit more and give it that little extra spark that he sees that it, that it, that it needs. Yeah. You know, and definitely the oohs and ahs, backing vocals, pe- people love the harmonies type of things. That's always good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. A lot of cool textures on this record, for sure. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well, I'm, I'm really excited to, to see what you guys come out with. Do we have a tentative time frame or anything? Maybe we'll be seeing it in the new year or we're, we're kind of working on all that still? It's going to be a while. It's probably going to be probably. Eh, don't give it, no. Yeah, we're not I, sure yet. We're, not yet. Yeah. I know they're still mixing it, but if usually, like you, you know, you probably figure in the next couple months, you're probably going to do drop a single. I would assume coming out, you know, eventually, like say Feb, January, February, something like that. Get ready for summer a little bit, maybe even farther down, maybe March. Yeah, I don't think anybody's going to hear anything from us this winter. I, I think I can safely yeah, say it's that. At least going to be right. Up. Spring. you know usually yeah. every project we've done before we like set ourselves a release date you know right. while we're still in the studio and then we're like scrambling to meet that date gotcha. and then, you know we're doing a lot more work on this one than we've ever done on anything else that we've released um from you know the music videos that we want to make to yeah. how we want to release it we want it on vinyl this time so this it's a lot more involved there's a lot more steps to what we want to complete with this one so we're not giving ourselves a deadline at this gotcha point. yeah that's gonna be you know, the next question you know i hope you're going to release a couple videos for it mm-hmm. you know that's that's definitely the way to go um yeah obviously vinyl people love the vinyl thing again you know it's very very cool collectors love seeing that and yeah to have it out in all the different formats you know and who knows maybe one day we'll see the cassette come back in a little bit who, who knows after they're done with vinyl you never know <laughs> yeah yeah. You know, and I have to say, wish Grace congratulations being voted best uh, best blues guitarist Buffalo. Well, I was there that night at the awards. I know I know you had a gig, and so I shot you a photo real quick. And I'm I know a couple other people did at the same time. I saw saying, "Oh yeah, check this out." So congratulations! I haven't got a chance to say that to you. So very yeah. very cool. I was, I was happy to see that, and and you guys are just crushing it. I see the dates already. You guys got a whole mess of dates lined up for summer. It's it looks like it's gonna be a busy grosh summer. You guys are kill, piling up the shows. We try. We yeah. try. <laughs> <laughs> we got some stuff coming up for sure. Gotta work. Yeah. <laughs> gotta eat somehow. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, excellent. Very, very cool. And so I just got another question, I think, for Grace, because I, I didn't realize this until I read through some of your stuff. So you were the tech. For Joan Baez. You were the guitar tech for Joan Baez. I'm sorry, but I got to ask about that story because that's pretty, pretty cool. Sure. Yeah. It was a great experience. I actually got it. Um, Grace Stumberg, uh, a singer and songwriter from Buffalo. She's one of my best friends. She got the job first, but as her um, assistant, personal assistant. And so she was doing that for a few years and then they needed somebody to tech. Um, and so she called me and the two of us ended up being able to tour together with Joan for, I think I did that for three or four years. Uh, and then she retired in 2019. Um, but yeah, we were all over Europe, um, multiple times a year and in the U S and it was, it was really, really special for sure. Yeah. That had to just be an amazing opportunity. Obviously, you know, landmark talent, she set the tone for so many things that went on in the sixties and seventies. You know, so many, so many people looked up to her and set themselves 
you know, they were influenced by what she did. So when I saw that, I was like, that's, that's pretty amazing. Very, very lucky for you to do that. Very cool. Pretty incredible and very down to earth. Like it's really cool that, you know. Yeah. And he had to be a little surreal when you met her for the first time. I'm sure it was like, <laughs> right. For sure. Yeah. All right. We're very, very cool. Well, I just want to thank you guys for coming back on the show, chatting with us. I know I've been uh, bugging Grace, trying to get a date and time to get together with you guys and, and seeing what's coming up. We're all excited about the new album. I know it's going to be excellent. Excited to see you guys play out, you know, all the dates, you know, maybe you'll be jumping on some shows with some of these guys you met at the ranch. Maybe I'm sure there's all kinds of things that are going on in the background. So yeah, I wish you guys the best. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I just also want to give a shout out and thanks also to our sponsor, School of Rock North Buffalo, where they're making new musicians every day. And yeah. folks out there, if you have comments or questions, feel free to email us at talkingaboutrock at gmail.com. We're available on all the streaming services wherever you get your podcasts and follow us on social media and our website, talkingaboutrock.com. Guys, again, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Bye. Bye.